His job here really is to take away those screens, and he does a terrific job of that. But he also gets back in the outside containment and makes the play on the ball. So if we go back to the other side here, you can see this guy here. He just stops and waits. So the fact that he can take on that block and take out that quarterback for two-yard loss, I mean, his defense is just nuts. There's just nowhere to go here. He run play all over that. Boom. Meets him one yard at the at past the line of scrimmage. This is the best run defense in the game. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot, sniffing out the college football 25 cheese. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys what I think is probably the most important base defense to use, uh, whether you're going against somebody who likes to run, pass, run RPOs, run option plays, you name it. This is going to be one of the best defenses to use in the entire game as a base defense to stop or slow down all these different types of plays. Now, the playbook that I'm in is in the 326. I think this is going to be the meta playbook. This is going to be the first ebook that I put out. Definitely, in my opinion, the best defense in the entire entire game but i'll go over that more tomorrow as i plan on putting out a best offensive and best defensive playbooks video uh to use uh, but it has a lot of great formations the formation that i'm going to use is going to be the dime rush also known as the dime normal but one of the best things about the particular defense i'm going to show you guys is you can really use it from any formation if your opponent is in a larger offensive package like a two tight end package you can always move up to the nickel three three or the three four odd any defense that has the uh, formation or has the, the zone coverage I'm going to show you guys. And that zone coverage is going to be cover for mats, whether it's cover for quarters or cover for palms. It really doesn't matter. They're both matching cover fours, and they're both designed the exact same way. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with cover for quarters because I use it the most. Uh, as far as my coverage shell options, though, there is something I'm going to show you guys, a trick I'm going to show you guys here. Uh, if you guys don't know with the right stick, you can go from default to cover zero, cover two man, cover two, you know, whatever. You can use about any defense you want here. I find the best for this particular defense is to go with cover zero, and I'll show you guys why. I'll first come out and default. Uh, we'll go with pick cover for quarters. On offense, we're just going to go ahead. We're going we're gonna to go with uh, some RPO plays. Now, as far as this setup goes, you can see these safeties are back kind of far, almost 15 yards on the one side, 12 yards on the other side. I want these guys typically down around 10 yards because I feel like this is a good uh, position for them to both help out and run and pass much faster. But once again, I'll back out and I'll show you guys you get that exact look just by switching your coverage shell to cover zero. So we're going to go over and pick the cover zero coverage shell, pick cover for cores one more time. And you'll see how now they're 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, which is exactly where I want them. Now, if I expect my opponent to be very pass happy, I might not necessarily want to do that because safeties can get burnt by elite receivers, and Ohio State definitely has a lot of that. So uh, that's something that I really leave up to you. Now, as far as the setup, there's really only two steps. Number one, I'm going to pinch defensive line by hitting the D-pad to left and then D-pad down. Sometimes they'll pinch to the point where they're like over a little far like they are here because, you know, if it's an outside run, they're going to get that edge because of the, the, the tight end uh, there. So all I have to do to fix that and get it more towards the middle is flip the play. But that doesn't always happen. I don't know what the deal is. You can flip the play in the huddle as well to try to mitigate that. Other than that, I want to bring these guys down for outside containment because that's really going to be their job. On a lot of blitzes, I'll show you guys in the future from this exact same formation, you're going to be doing that exact same thing. So it shouldn't be a tell. And then last but not least, I'm going to play underneath. Now, as far as cover four match is concerned, um, the deep coverage shell of cover four can easily get crossed up if your opponent runs a lot of corners and post routes and stuff like that. If you play underneath, this really solves a lot of the issues with cover four match. Number one, it overrides the matching principles. Now just have a base cover four shell that's going to just make sure that nothing gets behind them, which I prefer because it's much harder to beat that type of coverage than cover four match, actual matching cover four. The other thing is when these cornerbacks drop back, there's a big space underneath, and these hard flats will take care of that. So basically it just took away the biggest weaknesses to this defense simply by hard flatting. Uh, as far as RPOs go, which I know I picked an RPO, this slot receiver here, typically those seam flats do a great job of you know covering that. But even with me hard flatting, it's still programmed to do that. So we'll go ahead and run the play. Hard flatting will not take away that programming. You'll see that my opponent here or the will not do a single, they won't throw to that bubble screen a, a single time unless I switch defenses. Let's go to the replay to see what happened there. As you can see, um, this guy here, which like I said, his job, his job here really is to take away those screens, and he does a terrific job of that. But he also gets back in outside containment and makes the play on the ball. So that's what I mean. Like this, this outside containment here is just dynamite. As you won't see, he'll he'll essentially act like he's manned to this slot receiver. You will not see a single time that this slot receiver will get the bubble screen thrown his way. 
And you can see it happens on the backside too, as this guy here is going to just wait up for anybody to come his way. If the quarterback would have came back his way with the ball, he would have been all over that. So I'll go and I'll do that a few more times. Like I said, I do not expect a single time where, uh, you know, you're going to see these, these um, a single, you're not going to see a single pass to that screen because that's just how it is. But I bring the safeties down here just to show you that the closer they are to the play, the more that they'll react in the box. Like you see right there. So I made the stop, but it's all based off of play recognition this year. You're not going to get every safety dropping down based off of just the fact that that's what how Cub Force program. But you can see right here, he drops down the box. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the look that I'm expecting. I'm expecting him to walk down and help fill these lanes. So we just picked a random formation and just hit random. It really doesn't matter. I probably should have kept these safeties. I probably should go back to default because a lot of times if you have man zero as your um, as your as your coverage shell, it can mess up the formation, especially if you're like a trips receiver set or something like that. But we'll go ahead and run it like this. Like I said, I, I typically want those safeties back a little bit further too. As I'm biting all over, uh, I don't know if you caught that. It looks like the ball came out. But I bit all over that. You can see, like I said, those 10-yard safeties, once again, doing a really good job of getting into the play before the um, before the ball gets too far down the field. You know what I mean? That's that's part of the uh, that's part of the charm of having them at 10-yard depths. But like I said, it can make them a little vulnerable over the top too, so you have to watch for that as we're going to have two options here, and boom, another knockout. Now you got about two yards. You know what I mean? It's like those, those hard flats are key. So you can see right here, I don't really have to do anything in a, in a shotgun look like this. If I really want to, I can bring these guys down. I'll leave the, the spacing, too, as I'd rather get a little pass rush here. And, of course, we get a run play on the next play. But like I said, the safety right down the box. You know what I mean? Like, that's 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 the beauty of this defense. The, the, the safeties are so key. The hard flats are key, and these safeties are key, too. Look at this guy just walks right down the box and fills at a two-yard depth. And gets a two-yard pickup there because that safety is all over it. Like I said, if you really want to do a quick setup, just hard flat. That's all you really got to do. Pinching the defensive line obviously helps with run plays. Of course, we're getting another run play. Every time I don't pinch, we get a run play. But look at the safety once again. At the, he meets him at the line. Is that the safety once again? Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. This is how this is how this cup force is so key. Run play all over that. Boom. Meet some one yard at the at past the line of scrimmage. This is the best run defense in the game. Now, as far as the quarter flats go, if your opponent's passing a little bit deeper, you can leave the quarter flats alone. They'll do a better job than the hard flats will. Um, but I find that most people will pass underneath. But let's go ahead and let's leave it just in case we get some deeper passes right there. You can see that that would have been hard flat would have been on that, but the cornerback still came down and made a play. But that's that's really the, the the thing here. You know what I mean? It's like you really have to choose between hard flats and quarter flats if you're expecting your opponent to pass. We can see to pitch this line. Because I just feel like it's gonna be a run play. We've got a lot of run plays, and of course it was. Once again, safety all over that. So I'll leave it, I'm gonna leave the uh, adjustments alone. Here we go once again. Hard flat, definitely would have did a better job there. But like I said, you see you're not getting much regardless. You know what I mean? Like the matching principles, even when you leave the matching principles on, they still do a pretty good job. As we get, oh, I, I got bit on that. Oh, we finally get a deeper pass. But like I said, since I did hard flat, cornerback was all over that. I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. Like I said, I plan on putting out more um, blitzes from this formation in the future. So if you guys want to see that, please make sure to be a subscriber. Like, button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching. Memory shout out.